it is a- another week. <laughs> I switched up the music there a little bit. I see your face. It yeah. is another week, and this is another edition of the Pitch Stop here, presented by Pittsburgh Sports Now. So grab a seat and take a pitch stop with us as we go through the Pittsburgh sports scene. I'm Mike Osti. That's Mike Fakovacan. And you can also listen to us if you're not watching on YouTube and through our channels on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, etc. So if you don't want to see our faces, you can still hear <laughs> what we have to say on any of those podcast platforms. We are going to talk about the state of the pit football program, a little different than last time we spoke because they did lose to Louisville. Mike was down there in attendance, a great city. I think it's an underrated city. I got some family there, but not the best of results or the best day or weekend for the pit football team. What's going on now with the team? What are their sights the rest of the year? What do they need to do? Any pressure on Pat Narduzzi despite the special year of last year? Sticking with Slovis, has he been a bust so far? Certainly have expectations. Some fans are saying that. Is that the right call? And then even going into the future of Pitt, we're also going to talk about a Pitt all-time great, no longer a Pitt Panther, now a Pittsburgh Steeler, and that is Kenny Pickett, who is becoming a polarizing topic in Pittsburgh more than really anyone else right now in terms of Pittsburgh sport athletes, good or bad. And if that's really fair to him and what his life maybe will be like for the next decade, if somehow – the fan base and media don't get a grip and figure something out here in terms of criticizing him fairly one way or the other. And I'm pessimistic, unfortunately for Kenny, that that's actually going to be happening. Um, (laughs) But to start off and to dive in to Mike's trip to Louisville, first off, Mike, how was that trip to Louisville? Did you go down to Churchill down and saw a picture there? I know you told me you didn't get to the bat factory, but how was that overall experience? You told me that was the first time you were there. That's the place. Maybe you're, you're going to go again. Yeah, it, it was a good. I, I was very impressed with the stadium. I I, okay. uh, I think it's a great place uh, to watch a game. Um, I actually think it's better, honestly, than uh, Acrisure Stadium. Uh, I think it's a nicer football environment. Yeah. Uh, there was it's not name, a it's not a pro city like Pittsburgh. No, but it was big enough. And I think it's a perfect size. Maybe a little bit. Uh, it's right or about the size Pitt would want to have if they ever get a. Yeah, uh, on campus stadium. Maybe I think it holds fifty five thousand. Yeah, uh, Pitt would probably want to be at fifty thousand. You know, maybe forty five, fifty five. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, it, the, the town itself. Uh, I like the bourbon area where uh, yeah, part of the restaurants and parts. Uh, that was a very nice place around the stadium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't leave my kids alone there, uh, but. It's a good time. I, I, I wish Pitt would be able to play Louisville every year. I, right. I, I would rather see them uh, be a yearly rival or team that is on Pitt's schedule every year, maybe so than Boston College. We talked about that before, right? That BC yeah, thing. That's, that's like an 80s rivalry. rivalry. They're not really rivals now. Right. I, I think that's a place. I, I think there were the Pitt, Pitt, uh, the Pitt fans traveled well, I think. I don't think they traveled great, but I think they traveled yeah. well. It's not far. Uh, and I think that would be a better destination, uh, you know, five and a half, six hours to get down there as opposed to Boston. I, I think I, I wish there was a way to reconfigure the conferences and stuff and get get that. It, it seems like more of a natural rivalry, but I guess the history and everything between Pitt and Boston College. But, uh, you know, I'd, I'd give it a B, uh, okay. a B okay. trip. Uh Nice. Uh, another thing that I saw that I think Heather like, uh, if uh, you know, you want to incorporate something. Uh, they had a little uh, tailgate scene in front of uh, the stadium there. I forget the restaurant or I forget the the bar. It, it was an outside bar, but I think it would be a perfect thing for Pitt to do before their games. It was yeah. a place with a big screen TV. Uh, they had a uh, probably about twenty yards worth of um cornhole place like outside the stadium like outside the stadium yeah they had an outdoor bar music playing huge tv hung up on the i I, it it was a good scene where uh both fan bases got to uh interact with each other and uh the louisville fans were very uh very accommodating uh no uh no scene everyone was friendly it it was a good uh I, i think aside from the 
crap hole that I stayed in as far as the hotel. <laughs> uh, I think that is just scarring my memory. But I, I think right. overall it was a good uh, it was a good road trip. Yeah, and it is a relatively reasonable distance. You can yeah. make it in a day trip. You you, yeah. you you certainly could stay over, but it would only have to be maybe one day where you're staying mm -hmm. over. Whereas if you're going to Boston, you're likely doing it for three or four days because why else are right. you going to go there? So that's several hotels. You're probably spending another thousand dollars than what you would spend to go to Louisville. And, and yeah, that 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 does feel like an, you know, I've been there a bunch of times. I've not seen a, a, a Louisville football game, but that, that does sound like a really nice scene when you have yeah. the tailgate, when you have a college atmosphere, the stadium reasonably can get sold out. Obviously, they're, obviously Louisville is also, you know, the football program is fighting an uphill battle as well in terms of the fan base. It's a basketball city. It's a basketball right. state. So yeah. it's always going to be that way. And you, even horse rating might be number two. You're really number <laughs> three there. Um, you got to get the Churchill Downs. I know you you were there. That's really really cool. Anyone who, who, who travels to Louisville, but yeah, that's awesome. I yeah. mean, they have to have that good experience. But now to the game, yeah. not as awesome for the Pitt football team. I know we talked about on the last show that that game and the North Carolina game. If Pitt won those two, nothing else really would matter in terms of reasonable season. They certainly could still win the Coastal, win the ACC, etc. Now they're zero for one on that two games slate. You still have North Carolina coming up here. Obviously, that adds more of a necessity to, to that game and hope other things fall your way. Number one, what kind of happened for this team against Louisville? How did the wheels fall off? What do you now expect the rest of the season? Is there now pressure on Narduzzi despite a special year last year because he was very polarizing and some pit fans did want him gone prior to last season? Obviously, that saved him and bought him some rope. And then even the slowest decision that he's going to be the guy he's going to ride with doesn't want to waffle a QB. He is the transfer. A lot of people liked Patty in the off season. And even after last year, slowest has been hurt. He's not been great. There's a lot of other problems. I know you touched on the wide receiver issue as well on the site. So however you want to take it. Well, uh, to get to your first point, yeah, you, you hate to always football more than anything is a team game. You know, yeah. it's it's very rarely because of one thing, one person, one play. But uh, in this situation, uh, Pitt didn't win the game because of Keaton Slovis. It, it, it's that that's the bottom line. Everything else, they played winning football. Um, their quarterback wasn't good, hasn't been good. And he's, uh, unfortunately, he's killing the team right now. And I, I don't think there's anybody, including myself, I was dead wrong about this. Um, I, I think everybody, when he came to Pitt, just assumed that, you know, with the with the resume he had and the status and everything right. else, yeah, and what they saw last year with uh, Pickett, that things would just pick up. And Easier said than done. Yeah, yeah, the finding team. that out now. Uh, yeah. he, he, he's just not been good. And it's not all because of him, but I think the time uh, I've made enough excuses for him, I've talked enough about the offensive line, I've talked enough about, uh, you know, his receivers not helping him out. Sooner or later, it has to come to the quarterback. It, it, you can't always look to deflect the blame here. He, he looked like a guy – on Saturday that was um, unsure of himself. He was unconfident. Uh, he was scared. Um, he, he, he didn't look like a guy that was going to win a game. And I think that was a big part uh, of why they lost. And, but I'm also going to put it on Pat Narduzzi too, Mike. Um, yeah. He, as a coach, you have to, uh, you have to have a sense of what's going on and you can't be stubborn. You can't Keaton's my guy. I'm going to stick with him. Sometimes you just don't have it. Yeah. He's, he, he, he's not blind. He he's watched what's going on the last few weeks. And despite how bad Slovis was in the first half, uh, Pitt completely outplayed Louisville in the first half, yet it was only seven, seven. And that's a good thing because he threw two picks there was no way Slovis should have started the second half. Yeah. Pitt almost beat Tennessee without him. Right. Yeah. Even going um, back. Yeah. He he just shouldn't have started that second half. Okay. You can come back to North Carolina and still and come back and say, hey, uh, he had a bad game. 
my uh, devotion is to this team. My responsibility is for this team to win the game. From what I saw in the first half, uh, for whatever reason, Keaton didn't have it today. That's why we have a veteran in Nick Patty. Yeah. And I, I me. Yeah, think he exactly. won the game. Yeah. Okay. He refused to make the change. Uh, he was, And after that, you saw the play calling by Signetti. He was afraid to uh, open, do anything with him because of a quarterback that couldn't throw down the field. Louisville knew that, and they just have no chance. And the worst part about it, Mike, is that I'm not in the head of these kids on the team with him. Right. But I, it's only human nature. When you're on that offense and you are in the huddle and you see what's going on out there, there is no way in hell that those kids on <laughs> offense, the player, his teammates out there, have any sort of confidence in him or uh, th that he's going to make anything happen. And, you know, are they going to tell him that? No, but there was no way it was going to happen. And I think uh, Pat Narduzzi, um, Keaton Slovis was 1A why they lost. Pat Narduzzi's decision to be stubborn and not put the team first uh, was 1B as far as why they lost that game. Who who would you start then moving forward? Because Pat Narduzzi does not want to waffle. He wants to stick with his guy. And I guess you feel some sense of loyalty, even though this year you have to do what's best for the team. But when you bring a transfer in, it would be a tough thing to then take the job away because then there is no reason why Slovis transferred to Pitt. It would have been a bad decision for him personally. What would you do the rest of the season, regardless of what happened in Louisville, because that's the past. If it's up to you, who's starting against North Carolina? How does that evaluate? Are you doing it game by game? Are you giving the keys over to, to Patty? Are you keeping him with Slovis? Can Slovis lose this job or what does he have to do to stabilize it? What's that thought process? And then is also a lot of this, on Signetti in terms of the blame because we're touching on Narduzzi and Slovis is maybe this a situation where Signetti, Signetti is not putting Slovis in the right position to succeed and the marriage between them isn't the best because as much as Pickett had a great year individually and really worked himself up to being a pit legend he's always said and it's true that Mark Whipple is a big part of that that's a marriage they had together that worked those last couple of years at Pitt is this just a bad marriage regardless of Slovis or Signetti? To your first point, um, he's not going to change. Uh, Clearly what, not. What I do if I'm the head coach, I would start Slovis again against okay. North Carolina with uh, very limited rope. Okay. And Pitt's not going to – Pitt's not going to win the ACC Coastal now. They, they were eliminated. Uh, North Carolina doesn't have three losses on their schedule. With North, right. Carolina, with, um, with North Carolina State's quarterback out, uh, they might lose to Wake Forest. But they don't have three losses on the schedule. So Pitt isn't winning. The, the goal now is just to win as many games as possible. They're not winning the Coastal. Yeah, because even if you beat North Carolina, you're still behind record-wise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they're, they're done. They're done with that. Um, he won't do that, though. Uh, in the press conference yesterday or Monday, yeah. he was asked about, and he said, I'm in practice every day. I know who our best quarterback is. See, see, my my whole issue here is, assuming he's telling the truth yeah. and that Nick Patty is healthy, all we heard about prior to the season was what a great uh, quarterback battle it was. It was such a hard decision. From Narduzzi. Yeah, yep. Patty made it hard on me, yep. but Slovis was our guy. If that's true, how in the hell can't you at least, if, if, if he performed that well in camp and he's a guy that you know has been in the system, how do you not at least have the faith to go to him in the second half or even one of these games to see if he sparks the offense. Where do you think the lie is more likely in, though? Do you think maybe Patty's not as healthy as maybe that comment I, would be I, legitimate? Or do you think maybe he does legitimately feel Slovis is better than Patty, even if Patty didn't want the offense more? Because this is just co any coach would do this. It's not a criticism of Narduzzi, yeah. but we've certainly experienced Narduzzi 
not exactly being forthcoming in terms of 100% on every injury that's out there. He's not going to say Patty can't do it. He's not healthy enough because that would give something to the opponent as well. Where is more likely there to be a lie if there is one? Uh, I'm not going to use the word lie, but all I want to say, uh, I just think it is a situation where he's going to live or die with Keaton Slovis. Yeah, it appears that he, way. He did everything he could to get him here. Um, it would look the, bad on him, I guess, if Patty would go in there and dominate, even though he would get the win. Yeah. That yeah. would make the Slovis transfer pointless, and it would actually hurt Slovis. Oh, uh, Yeah. Uh, and, and and honestly, we we said this at the beginning of the year. If they had yeah. complete faith in Nick Patty, that's true the too. Of the year, hundred percent. They they wouldn't have pursued Keaton Slovis, right? So uh, I, I think that's where it is. I think pot potential. He has more potential than Nick Patty. Yeah. Point through seven games, we have not uh, seen that yet at all. He has not yeah. looked. Uh, it's fair. You know, they got lucky. Pitt, honestly, Pitt is lucky not to be two and five. They probably shouldn't have won the West Virginia game. Uh, kid dropping the pass. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was a lucky win. And, yeah, you know, they're, and they're 300 yard performance away from Virginia Tech by Izzy of possibly losing that game as well. So right. th they're th there's a lot of ways you can look at this. But to your point about Signetti, I don't think he has done anything wrong. I, I think he's just been a victim of the quarterback. And I'm not going to. Okay. Uh, I think there's only so many things you can do. He's a guy that's been around a while. He's seeing what's going on there. He's seeing his quarterback. He's trying to put him in as many uh, situations as possible to be successful. And he knows he doesn't have. And, and I don't know if. He doesn't have the uh, the call, the final say into sitting him, and if that's all up to Narduzzi, I don't know. I'd so, imagine, but uh, here here's here's the thing: Pitt fans are ripping Frank Signetti this week, mm -hmm. and that he was a terrible hire, uh, an old guy. Uh, it's different than what Mark Whipple in terms like of the, Sean the style. Watson, he plays right. 1980 style football. Right. Here's the deal. Frank Nar uh, Pat Narduzzi brought him in in order to balance this offense. That's that's what he wanted to do. And to this point, uh, it's been pretty balanced as far as 50-50. Yeah. They, they've actually passed the ball a little bit more than they've run the ball. The reason this hasn't worked is Pitt has a heck of a lot better running game than they've had in the last few years. Both Narduzzi and Signetti, when they went out in the transfer portal and they brought in Slovis, they thought that, hey, if we run the ball like this and we have a quarterback that's a little bit above average. Yeah, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be Kenny Pickett. Doesn't have at to all. be Pickett, but we're gonna right. be we're gonna be fine. The thinking, that's was the thinking. It's not bad thinking. That makes no, sense. It, it, and, and that's why I don't have a problem with Signetti. And also, I think the other end of it that fans I know are bringing up too is, which is a criticism of Narduzzi, some are saying, well, you quote unquote ran out the offensive coordinator that was one of the best in the country and helped pick it. But that relationship was was going to end. We talked about that before, that at the end of last season, that was just going to be the end of that relationship. Right. There was nothing that Narduzzi could have done all of last season in any type of closed door meeting or having any beers yeah. that was likely going to change that result. So to say that Narduzzi is to blame for Whipple being gone, and you, if you're a Pitt fan, you want to still have Whipple there, that's not reality. <laughs> so, and it's not like things are going yeah, well for Whipple's Whipple not individually. Up, Whipple's not tearing up Nebraska. Right. Nebraska well, fired their coach. They can't score points. Yeah, so yeah. Let's, let's not act as though he's Andy Reid. Right. But that's everyone, brought up, too. That's the other end of this, too. Everyone at Pitt... And to be honest with you, the jury is going to still be out on Pat Narduzzi because everyone has yeah. been uh, elevated by Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett made this whole ship go. He feels like he's the guy that based on what we've seen this year yes. and even what's going on with Nebraska with Whipple that you brought up, Pickett's getting more and more credit for last year. Yeah, P Pickett made Mark Whipple Mark Whipple put him in a position and gave him the opportunity by throwing a lot, but yeah. still you have to have the ability. And it's obviously Pickett did Pickett made Mark Whipple. 
Mark Whipple's a good offensive coordinator. Yeah, yeah, it's not to say. I, I'm right, not right. saying he's. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's a it bad a situation in Nebraska. I don't know who else would yeah. have success. And I don't think it was a mistake that Pitt got rid of him. But um, Pat uh, Pickett made Pitt the Pitt program better. Yeah. Uh, Pitt made or Pitt when you have made, a Heisman candidate, it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, he he made uh, Narduzzi's job security a lot better. Got him the ex- yeah. A lot of the good things happen because of Penny Kenny Pickett. His numbers should be retired, and they should one hundred percent. That that should be happening. Uh, soon what he did to the pit program yeah. but you know there's there's going to be a lot of a lot of things happening here uh be curious to see what happens the rest of the season because the heat's going to be on pit should be six and one right now if they would have a competent quarterback they have they, they haven't had that and the only loss they probably should have lost you know because i'm not going to say they should have beat tennessee that's a loss the rest yeah. of the games in the schedule pit should have won they would have won if they would have had um, a halfway decent quarterback yeah. with the ability to throw the ball down the field, and they don't have that right now in Keaton Slovis. And as you mentioned, because there's a, there's a glass half full take that some had prior to the loss to Louisville that Pitt has these wins. They only have the real bad – they have the bad loss to Georgia Tech, but that Tennessee loss is obviously a very, very good one. Should they still be ranked? And especially certainly before the Georgia Tech game. And then now there is the glass half empty take that's also a reality that – if Pitt would have had Kenny Pickett, they would have mopped the floor with West Virginia and Virginia Tech, whereas certainly a ball bounce is another way, a call was made another way. Pitt might have lost those two games, and those two teams are not ranked right now. They're floundering. So it just depends on where you want to be optimistic or pessimistic. If you're a Pitt fan right now, Mike Pekovic and Mike Osta here. This is the Pitt Stop here on Pittsburgh Sports Now. Now, I do want to kind of ask you before we go into the Steelers and any Kenny Pickett talk and anything else you have about – the rest of the way here for this season or next does anything that exists with the struggle. So do the struggles of Keaton Slovis, because we both agree that the thinking in the off season of bringing in Slovis, who's had success that has a pedigree that is a veteran. It's the way I call it football. It's happened all the time. WVU did it with JT Daniels. It's, it's what you do. No one's going to say you're stupid for doing it. You bring him in. You were going to lose Whipple anyway, so that's nothing that really can be argued about either. You bring in a solid guy who can balance the offense that at the time Pitt fans liked. And those decisions, we agree, were good ones, or at least it's hard to second-guess them now. Right. Because now you can say that they were bad ones, but at the time, everyone liked those decisions. Do the fact that those decisions in retrospect still make sense going back does that offer a little bit more rope for Narduzzi? Because it's almost to say that you and I would have made the same decisions in the offseason. These aren't working out, and it's having him lose games. And I get that last year's a special year. Prior to that, it was a roller coaster ride, and maybe it'll be a roller coaster ride moving forward, and that'll take away the specialness, maybe, of that on Narduzzi's resume from 2021. But does the fact that his decisions aren't really bad ones, even though they haven't worked out, actually help him in those arguments if you get what i'm saying yeah i i don't think pat narduzzi is not going to be in any he's not going anywhere no, no, he's, no. Gonna be and, coach and he's not year, but he's not in terms of even fan perception i i don't think anyone at pitt anyone around at pitt everyone at pitt would have done the same thing right pitt That's wasn't the only team in the country fighting for keaton slow not at all no uh, notre dame you had teams Power five teams all around the country fighting for Keaton. Slavis. I don't think they knew they were going to lose Jordan Addison at the time. Yeah, but, it, right. Pitt, Pitt could still not have Jordan Addison, and if they would have just, it, yeah. it, it's not, it's not possible to underest to to put it's Keaton Slovis just has been really really bad this season. Yeah, no one thought he'd be this. Bad. No, right. and and that's what's happened. It, it, it it's. It, it's a shame, and, and you hate to narrow things down to just one thing, but Pitt doesn't lose any of those games if they have a quarterback that – It's the most important position on the field. There's a reason why they get MVPs the, every time they win. That's why you hear that all the time. Yeah. So Pitt is in – if you look at the whole roster, Pitt's not a bad team. No. Has They're their getting their more than you would line? think maybe out of the running backs, really. Yeah, has their offensive line, their offensive line yeah. probably hasn't played up to par. Right. That's contributed a little bit to Slovis. 
I think the second biggest thing is I think the the receivers uh, haven't performed as advertised. Yeah. But if you have a quarterback that's good, he makes those receivers better. Yeah, Pickett would have elevated the these guys. Right. Yeah, we see that all the time. Tom Brady, he throws he, – anyone that went into the Patriots system, yeah. uh, he made – he made good. And that's what quarterbacks do. That's what Pickett did. Yeah. Um, and it, it just comes down to that. So their their goal in the offseason is gonna be. I, I don't know. I, I don't know who the quarterback's gonna be. I think Slovis has a uh a year that he could come back. He could come back, right? And Patty yeah. can sure. Patty's so done, but there's a whole lot of storyline that's gonna go on here. But I will tell you that I will say. I this. mean, Slovis could transfer again. I guess. I mean, we've seen that with QBs. Yeah, I'd imagine he would want to leave again if he's not the guy. Yeah. Well, I think he's either going to be the guy or he's, you know, going to done. Go, yeah, yeah, he's done with football. Yeah. He, I don't think he's not going on to. Another well, he could. He could do. He I mean, could. He could go to like Troy or something. We've seen lower level. I mean, playing yeah. is better than not playing. Uh, yeah. Right. But I think the thing that's frustrating to your part about Narduzzi is Heather like in that they entered this season with thinking that the pit football program was back as right. far as there was a little bit of buzz about it. Yeah. Fans, uh, their ticket sales were up. Uh, people were excited about the, the program. We're going to contend for the ACC championship. Packed in at the backyard brawl. Yeah. As in Howard and has them in the playoff going into the season. Nationally, they're getting respect. They don't normally feel they get respect nationally. They did and this now year. This, and now this season has a chance, really, Mike, of um, going off the rails. And if that happens, then you're going to have the, the pit fans. They're going to have the same attitude as they've had for a lot of years. And uh, I don't blame them. And yeah. that's, you know, they're not going to be excited. There's too many things in this town. You better be good. It's a pro town, right? It's yes. not Louisville. It's not West Virginia. It's not Penn State. It's a pro town, right? You better it's be hard. good or given your fan base hope. And if they finish and crash and burn at the end of the season with a quarterback and this team not winning, um, there'll be a long off season. And then the pit marketing department and everyone else has to fight the battle yeah. of getting people interested in uh, football like it, this wasn't what was supposed to happen you needed back-to-back -back years of at least qual even if not an acc title again at least yes close. Uh, right yeah and you know the other thing is uh, i'm not predicting any of this stuff but all you have to do is be uh have your eyes open to what goes on in the world today as far as college athletics and losing and all I'm saying is, Pat Narduzzi, I, I think this – I'm going to watch how I say this so I don't get any, anyone over at Pitt pissed at me. Um, <laughs> uh, Pat Narduzzi's motto of uh, we, not me, right. has, has the potential to be challenged uh, in these last few, if, if things start to go bad – He's going with Slovis. He's sticking with Slovis. If Slovis and, and doesn't the whole team. Okay, kids, yeah, yeah. kids that might not be happy with what their position are on the team. I can see that, yeah. And stuff like, uh, if the winning doesn't start happening, I, I think there's the possibility that things get off. Unless there's some really good senior leadership on that team, I, I think there's a chance of uh, you know things going off the rails a little bit. And people, yeah. for the first time under Narduzzi, to his credit, no matter how things have bad, been bad for him, uh, him and his staff have been able to keep the kids on the team uh, focused, keeping them. Got to give them credit for last year. John yes. Patri Johnny Patrician came on this show, this very show a few weeks ago, and he also is one of the senior leaders that are no longer a part of the Pitt program, obviously. He's looking at an NFL career he's trying to make happen. But he literally said that after that Western Michigan game, it was so bad, but the senior leaders and the coaching staff – really helped us drive the ship and make sure it didn't go off the rails. And we ended yeah. up having the best season the program's had in, in decades. You got, even with Pickett being a Heisman candidate, you got to give Narduzzi credit oh, yeah. for making that season what it was. Cause a lot of other coaches would have said, Western Michigan, we lost. It's just now going to be a four win season. Instead, it became one of the best years that got Narduzzi a lot of rope. 
that has to be a feather in Narduzzi's cap the way they did it last year. But yes, if this year would go off the rails and then next year there'd be a lot of pressure, it would be fair to go into next season where fans, certainly rival fans and certainly even Pitt fans would be questioning, was 2021 an aberration, not the norm for the Pitt program? And if it's an aberration, then you're really not in any better footing than you were prior in terms of new recruits, future conference situations, et cetera. But next year will be a very big deal because of it. But but last year, you got to give Narduzzi the credit. But now we got to make sure this year ends on a positive note. Yeah, they, they really do. They, they need something positive to start happening here. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they had a kid transfer out mid-season, yeah. which doesn't we happen a lot that. with them. Right. And uh, we will see. Uh, and it's going to be a, a challenging part of the schedule here. We said that. Last week was the first start of it. Mm-hmm. And this week's not going to get any easier. I, I just don't see with the way things are going right now. I just don't see them uh, having a chance of winning at North Carolina. To beat North Carolina, you have to score uh, 30 plus points. You have to score 35 points to have a chance. North Carolina's defense is terrible, um, but their offense is prolific. And Pitt uh, last year, and that's why Pitt won, because they had guys that can. They yeah, pick and hang forward. Forty sure plus. They can't, yeah. you know, unless they get defensive touchdowns or, uh, you know, they get short fields or something. I just don't see Pitt um, having the uh, ability to put up the points to hang with North Carolina. I think they're. I think Pitt's defense will. It could be a lot like the Georgia Tech game where they just fade late. I think. I think they they could hang with them a little bit, but. Um, I, I just don't see. I think they have the offense to be able to win, and then you know, North Carolina only favored by three. I was just looking. I thought maybe it would be more than yeah, that. Yeah, Drake May. He's uh, the freshman quarterback for North Carolina. He leads the conference in yards per game, three hundred eighty yeah. yards uh, per game, uh, and then they have a first round pick. He'll be one of the first wide receivers drafted. Josh Downs. It's going to be it's going to be a test for Pitt's defense hanging with them. But uh, obviously Pitt's going to probably try to muddy things up, take time off the clock with, yeah. with Izzy and limit the possessions that North Carolina has. But uh, in the end, I, I just think their, their big playability uh, will do Pitt in. And um, unless something happens between today and or this week and Saturday with Keaton Slovis and, the light just cl- goes on. Yeah, I mean, he's done it in the past. We it's, have tape. It's a possibility. Him yeah, it's not as though you're talking about a a freshman quarterback, right? Or, or a you know a walk on quarterback to try to do a miracle. Keaton Slovis has the ability. He's won games. He, I mean, he was yeah. contending for a Pac-12 conference with USC. It's not you know chump change stuff. This isn't Pee Wee football tape. I mean, yeah, and, and he, he just hasn't done it. And so you're just going by the past seven games. You've right. seen nothing in the last seven games, right. six games. Uh, you know, maybe he's not healthy he, enough. We're talking about Patty's injury. Maybe Narduz, maybe Slovis hasn't really been healthy since that injury. Whatever the case, I just for Pitt's sake, I hope he does. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm laying money, uh, it's going on North Carolina. I, I just I've seen nothing in Pitt's offense that's going to allow them uh, to score 30 plus points against yeah. uh, North Carolina to win the game. And I'm I'm surprised only right now three. I'd imagine before game time that could move up because people, if they're thinking like you, that's more money that's going to North Carolina right now. And right now, that I'm jumping at that. Only, only a three point spread there. North Carolina should be able to get that done. Mike Bakovic and Mike Oster here. It's the pit stop, and we are now going to take a pit stop to close up the show to talk about a pit legend that we just mentioned is getting tons of credit for last season's pit success based on what's happening now with the pit program. But he doesn't really care about that anymore. His mindset is about his pro career and trying to fix the Pittsburgh Steelers, who right now are in the midst of their worst season ever under Mike Tomlin, very much looking like the first losing season Tomlin will ever have. This is after Big Ben retires, and despite 2019 not being that much of Ben, that will always be brought up for Tomlin if this season continues to go off the rails and go in the toilet. Kenny Pickett became the starting quarterback. He's been okay, but he's also had some really, really bad moments. A lot of interceptions, a lot of turnovers. You're just talking about a game against Miami that you certainly could say a couple bad passes from him and those interceptions are why they lost that game. It's it's hard to say Kenny Pickett played well there. Now, Trubisky wasn't playing well either. 
And he, and if you're going to lose and have a veteran, you might as well play the first round draft pick and lose that way. There's going to be growing pains with the rookie QB, but he was a first round draft pick. So Mike, the conversation right now exists of some fans basically saying that Kenny Pickett's your Heisman candidate. He's your first round pick. He's the only first round pick as a QB. You said he's NFL ready right now. So I got to expect more than him throwing picks to lose you games, even though he's a rookie. There are other people. I'm one that's saying that even if you say you're an NFL ready QB, that's an NFL ready QB amongst the draft that nobody else got taken in the first round. And I don't care who you are. If you're a rookie QB, you've got to allow some growing pains. Peyton Manning was throwing picks left and right his rookie season. And he's talking about it on Monday night football to defend picket. And those people still don't care. Although there's a whole third tinge in, that basically no matter what pick it does, they're just going to defend him. The picks aren't his fault and he just walks on water and is always going to get defended because he's the pit guy and they want him to have success. And then there's others that just hate him because he's the pit guy. And maybe they're fans of WVU or Penn state or whatever as Steeler fans. There's four different sides to this. <laughs> I hope it calms down and we can at least get down down to two or, or something of some logic and sanity. Cause I don't know if I can put up with this for the next 10 years. Clearly he's the Steelers guy they're invested in. Where are you? And I feel bad for Pickett to have to deal with this. I know you do too. How does this shake out? What is the realistic analysis of his game so far? And how should it be viewed? Because it's just all over the freaking place. Yeah, it's it, it's annoying, but it's the, it's the unfortunately for Pickett, um, you know, it's the world we live in yeah. as far as, you know, not to rip any of our um, – media colleagues or media brethren but um it's it's clickbait it's yeah. get people to tune into your radio I shows get i get it yeah it's you you, you stay stuck you know you, you rip people for uh, uh you know talking uh, I, I just can't believe all the talk about kenny pickett and, and then you look at the uh, person's twitter i'm not going to call him out but you know you look at his twitter feed and that's all that's that that that's all it is so he he contributes to it. It, it it's annoying. Yeah, on both ways. Any, no, any picket, right? It's not going to bother. He, he's, it might not bother. Yeah, he's, he's not. With who I feel bad for. Pitt fans were out on his, you know, where two years ago. So oh, yeah. he's dealt with this before. I feel bad for his parents uh, yeah. because you, I don't care who. Kenny's a different type of cat. Yeah, he's going to be able to, and he's going to be in that building and. Is he going to hear some of it? Yeah, but as 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 you said, and that's a great point. He was he was with this a couple of years ago, with two three years ago with Pitt, and the Pitt fans said he sucked and everything. Yeah, people else. forget that now, but right. Yeah, now <laughs> you know. But Steelers, it's a different. It's a whole. Obviously, it's a whole different beast. Uh, being bad for the Steelers or for Pitt is uh, nothing. Being <laughs> bad for the Steelers. Uh, yeah, right. The intensity is going to uh, ramp up a lot. This is what you expect. Josh Allen, his first year starting for the Bills. Right. He stunk. He had 10 intercept, 10 touchdowns for the year, 12 interceptions. He was bad. 100%. That's, that's why you <laughs> play these guys now. You play them now, and if they're not mentally tough enough to get through the criticism and playing bad, then it was a bad pick to begin with. And the Steelers, I'm sure, because they're not idiots either, no matter what some fans maybe want to say. Obviously, they've had tons of success, and you haven't had a losing season, so you, you know how to have success in the NFL. Mike Tomlin, the Rooney family, everyone with the Steelers, I'm sure they knew that once they went to Kenny Pickett, and again, I do think if you're going to lose, if you're going to have a mediocre year, Trubisky probably is playing a little better than Pickett, a little bit more careful with the football. Maybe you'd win a game or two more this year, but I don't think it's better to crawl out of the playoffs. But he, regardless, I mean, he, yeah, yeah. he, he didn't turn it over as much the as the benefit of him. This yeah, all the, is that point. Yeah, but I, I, I do the same. I yeah, it's, it's about the same numbers wise. I think Pickett turns it over a little bit more in terms of the small chunk, I guess is my only point there. But I would have started Pickett when they did, and I would start Pickett now. I don't think there's any reason to go back to Trubisky, but I'm sure the Steelers knew in their heart of hearts that once we go to Pickett, that 
we're going to have to deal with some growing pains. This isn't going to be Pitt football 2021. This isn't going to be every game lights out 353 TDs, no picks. There's going to be some problems here. He might lose us a game some here, but this is our future. This is our guy. We're not going to have Trubisky, the quarterback, next year. It's going to be Kenny Pickett. So why not go through this if we're going to have a season that's mediocre? Trubisky started week one because he was the vet, and if they were winning, that's where you stick with, and you win, and you you keep going with the vet, and then you give it to Pickett a couple years from now. But if you're not winning and Trubisky's not playing well, what's the point? So regardless of what, whether you believe that they fell on to Pickett and they had to take him and they weren't expecting him to be where he was in the draft, and that's why they signed Trubisky, signed Trubisky whatever the case may be, they knew that there'd be with growing pains would exist with Pickett. I'm sure they're not surprised that this maybe is happening. Yeah, and, and it's impossible – to my to to take away the interceptions it's impossible that's that's the only thing i would say in terms of the trubisky edge player to player yeah the picks but if you look at and 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 i and i know i'm gonna sound real dumb by saying this and i've said a lot of dumb things in my life so it's not uh it's not new (laughs) a lot of people say a lot of dumb things by the way in this topic but if you look at and 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 i'm not a kenny uh, pickett apologist am i a huge fan of his yes i am too I see a I'm lot even of a pit fan. and I see a lot of th- throws that he's made, plays that he's made that excite me that mm-hmm. I don't see Mitch Trubisky making. You can that's fair. You you can you can count on in his time here, uh, maybe one hand plays that uh, were like there you go. You know you, you got you excited, right? Pickett, there's a lot. His problem. And you and it has to has to change, or uh, it's never going to work for him. Is that is are those crucial turnovers? But yeah. there were a lot of his getting between the twenty to the other twenty is good. Getting inside that twenty, he can't turn the ball over. He has. He to, did spark the team when he went in there. Yeah. He did spark the team, one hundred percent. No question. And uh, you know maybe he has to pull it back a little bit and. Uh, maybe realize that this isn't college football and these players in the NFL are, you know, mm-hmm. uh, step quicker. Maybe check, uh, check it down if, in, yeah. instead of trying to force the ball in there and trusting your arm. But that's what makes him Kenny Pickett. So there, there's a. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't want him to get away from himself. I just right. want to quickly read to, and obviously this is a Hall of Famer who's one of the best of all time, so it's not a fair thing to necessarily say, Mike. But he just pulled up the numbers, and the yards were there, but five-time MVP Hall of Famer Peyton Manning, who, again, was trying to defend Pickett the other day, rookie season, 28 interceptions, 99, 15 picks, 2,000, 15 picks, 2021, you think it's fixed. You think everything he's care, taking care of the football with all the yards. He's getting really good. They're getting in the playoffs. All of a sudden, 2021, 26 CDs, 23 interceptions, 19 the next year. After that, he really calmed down, 10, 10, 9, and then he was MVP all those years after that and became one of the best ever. But that's four or five years with tons of interceptions. So – you got to deal with it a little bit. I mean, the right. Steeler, the Part Steeler fans got a little spoiled. It's very rare to go from one Hall of Famer to the other Hall of Famer. And I'm not saying Pickett's going to the Hall of Fame, but he certainly could have a really nice career. Maybe he could get there someday. There, you, you, you aren't having any conversation about giving up on Pickett for at least three or four years. I mean, yeah. this is the guy. So if you're already, there are some Steeler fans. I saw this on Twitter. If you are out on Kenny Pickett. And you are a Steeler fan that is going to avidly watch these games. Boy, are you going to have a rough go because <laughs> for whatever reason, because this is the guy they are, they are invested and you are going to give him more rope than say a Trubisky or somebody else. If Trubisky throws a pick or can convert for a score, you're going to be more upset than Pickett, who is your first round pick. You're going to give him more time. That's just the reality of the situation. You know what's going to help? Start you know what's going to help here. Kenny Pitt? You know yeah. what's going to help Kenny Pickett? Do you know what's going to help him? I, 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 was it rhetorical? What, what is going to help yeah. him? For the Steelers to really be bad this year. Oh, I said this, and they, yes, yeah, Steeler fans were mad at me. Yes, 100%. They, they, getting in the playoffs they, is not they a good need, thing. They need to be really, really 
bad this year. You, you, there's no benefit of, of no. riding somebody else to an eight or nine win season getting a wild card. You might Maybe. as well let Pickett shake this yes. off and you're better off losing. And then you can really retool around him because we're not going to do it now, but a whole conversation we could have another day. Maybe they'll trade Claypool in the off season that could bring picks in. There are some people that are out on him. Najee Harris hasn't been nearly what he's supposed to be. They got problems on defense. This team has things. They have pieces, but there's things they need to yeah. fix and make decisions on on what they're doing with the pieces around Pickett now. And if you have a better draft spot, you're in a much better situation to do that. If you don't have that good draft spot and you're a nine-win team and you lose in the wild card round and you don't trade Claypool, for example, I talked about this on my show with Neil Kulong, I mic drop well and believe he basically you got like four draft picks overall, and then you got to fix a whole unit around, and you're probably bad again next year. So, yeah, yeah, you are better off losing. Get a top five pick, top six pick, right. get that left tackle, uh, load up on the offensive line, load up on the defensive line, and I would take my chances. I, I think they have enough to win, uh, and everything else. They yeah. need to fix both lines, get more youth on the defensive line because Cam Hayward and those guys aren't going to be there. And their offensive line just isn't good enough right now right. Uh, for them to compete. If you have any guys that can get you draft picks this year, you trade them. Clay, uh, Claypool's the guy. Claypool yeah. is not going to be part of the future. If you can get a fourth-round pick for him, he's out of here. Yeah, I, I load up as many picks as possible in this draft, and I, and I yeah. do the Carolina method – of what they're doing. They're going to be bad. And yeah, they got a haul for Christian McCaffrey. People made fun of them, yeah. but I would, that's a good trade for them. Now they weren't going to win anyway. Right. And, and they traded Robbie Anderson. They got a draft pick. They're probably not done before Tuesdays, next Tuesdays, uh, NFL trade deadline. You get as many picks as you can, like the Miami dolphins did. Yeah. They did. And they're going to be having picks coming in for the next couple of years. You're going to be bad. It's not bad. It's not okay. Just to be, pretty bad you want to be bad yeah, not seven and eight or <laughs> seven and nine you want to be three and 13 you want to be four and 12 you, you want to be somewhere in there yeah tanking works it does i'm not now in all yeah. reality mike this is what we would do the steelers are not going to do i'm not this. saying tanking but play the young guys and if they, you lose because of that it's okay, okay. if you have yeah. a chance to trade somebody of value that you know is not going to be with your team in a year or two yeah, and he still has value. You trade him. Right. You don't hold on and pretend hope that you know we can maybe fight out to be eight and eight and get in the wild card. Uh, you need to rebuild around Kenny Pickett, and it starts with getting him uh, a competent offensive line, and then after that, you know, probably another running back. Yeah, although we both know how this is going to go. Uh, the, and Alan Saunders, actually, I'll give him credit. He brought this up the other day. Just the way that God intends this season to go. There's somehow, and this might be good for picking in the fans that you're going to see a glimpse of him. He's going to turn something on at the end of the year, and they're going to find some way to crawl into like seven wins or something like that. And they won't be able to be the draft pick that you're talking about. They're, that's just how it goes for the Steelers. They're going to end up getting enough out of the year to be mediocre rather than bad, but you are, you would be better off being bad. You really, really would. I don't know. I, I don't, I'm going to disagree with that. I don't, I don't okay. see very, I don't see very many more wins. It's a bad team. <laughs> Wouldn't be shocked if they're bad. I mean, this I, is I just not don't a good see, team. Yeah. Realistically looking at, I looked at the schedule yesterday. I just don't see very many yeah. chances that of uh, places where they can win. I, yeah, that's fair. And I think we also learned teams, that, there's yeah. not a lot of terrible teams on their schedule right now. No. Um, and the, the win over the Bucs, I mean, yeah, they're the Bucs with Brady, but it doesn't look as good once they lose to Carolina. I mean, they're losing everybody. So, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. It's gonna not going to start this week in Philadelphia. I know some yeah. people. <laughs> that, I don't that, think is, so, that isn't no. happening. No, I, I definitely don't think so. I, I definitely don't think so. Regardless of any, where anybody, uh, you know, lines up here politically in this state, with that's a, a topic right now as well. I, I think everyone kind of can agree the Eagles are the better football team right now. And obviously the Phillies are the better baseball team. The Pittsburgh only got the hockey team right now. It's basically it's gonna bad. It. It's going to be a bad weekend for our networks. Penn yeah, state isn't going to win. West Virginia isn't going to win. No, Pitt isn't going to win. And the Steelers aren't going to win. So we're yeah. going to have a lot of, uh, we're going to have a lot of losing to talk about uh, next week. 
Yeah, it's good or bad. I mean, you know, depending on how you look at it, maybe the engagement will be good. But <laughs> yeah, um, I've experienced that over there with the West Virginia site. But yeah, yeah, that that's very, very likely to be the case. And I don't know, there's been some bad moments and bad games for these teams. But through our network and those four teams, I don't know if I can remember the last, we'll have to look this up the last time that all four of those teams lost in the same weekend. Who do you like think has the best chance to win out of those four teams? Oh, Lord. Um, I'm almost going to say Penn State has the least chance to win. Um, I think I, this is crazy. I think the best chance to win out of those four teams is either the Steelers or maybe, God, it's either the Steelers or maybe West Virginia or Pitt, just because North Carolina's defense is really, really bad. West Virginia is a roller coaster ride, and maybe they would catch TCU because TCU, I think TCU is going to lose a game. Like they're going to lay an egg to a bad team. Is this it? I don't I know. know. I mean, the West Virginia offense is not going to be as bad as it was last week. Uh, there's no it's way Penn State's beating Ohio State. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Pitt, the Steelers, West Virginia, Penn State. Okay. I mean, I, yeah, that probably. I, probably yeah, Penn State has the least chance. There's no, no way they have no chance in hell of winning. Yeah, uh, yeah, at all. Yeah. yeah, and West Virginia and North Carolina's defense are about the same. The right. only difference, the only difference is West Virginia could put points on the board, yeah, and maybe, and maybe challenge them. Whereas that's they, the only reason why I maybe would go there because they that offense is not going to be bad. Maybe two they weeks can in get a row. to a freshman. Maybe they get to a freshman quarter. This will be the best defense that this kid has played yeah. uh, since he's been in North Carolina. This, you know, he's a freshman, but he hasn't played a defense like Pitts. So this. Could maybe slow him down a little bit, so that maybe that might negate. And who West Virginia's at home. NFL. It's the NFL. You just never know. You just that's um, the thing. I would think the most likely to win because it's the NFL. You never know. There's a lot of talent on the Steelers. Still, they're veteran players. They're hungry. They're well coached. The most chance, the best chance to win will be the Steelers. I don't think they're going to win, but I think the best chance to win will be the Steelers. And then I, I, I oddly do think maybe then it's West Virginia, maybe Pitt right near them just because West Virginia is at home and that offense cannot yeah. be as bad as they were again with JT Daniels. But I, in everyone's money in the world, I'll bet your money, my money, everyone else's money. And I'll apologize to Nittany sports. Now, if I am wrong, there is no chance in hell Penn state is winning. No, I no. no chance. I mean, no. at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> that'll, that'll, that'll do it for this show. I had one thing I know uh, that has not happened. It. Boy. Um, Mike Vakov again, Mike Osti. A lot of questions around the Pittsburgh sports scene right now, and it's polarizing. So maybe everyone can get their, their give Pickett a break. We'll Jesus, see. Just yeah. give the guy a break. Rookie quarterback. I mean, he's a rookie quarterback here. I don't know. God, I mean, there are people actually arguing with me that always oh, NFL ready. I expected Pro Bowl right away. Like, what in the world are you talking about? <laughs> like, that's it. I think Joe Burrow maybe made everybody's mind run amok because he right away two years you're in the Super Bowl, but. His team around him, pretty freaking good. Yeah, you got it. Rookie QB. Lord, Lord help me. Yep.